Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve of That Church, and we're here in Acts chapter 14 today. <laughs> as, as I am looking at this today, we're seeing the same thing that we saw yesterday, and then he's going to go to several different places. So let's start off with a word of prayer, and it's, it's a good day because we're seeing how it's consistent what they started to do. So, Father God, we need you. We need you helping us be consistent with what we are going to do and how we're going to do it as we pay attention to what your Holy Spirit is leading us to do and, and that we're working with you all the while, allowing you to, to show forth and, and avouch and, and confirm the gospel the good news coming forth from our mouths. And we thank you for working with us. We need you. More than needing you, Father God, we choose you and want you, and we, we love you. We welcome you to be our teacher today. Show us your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, as we are getting into chapter 14, <clears throat> realize how they just ended Chapter 13, it said in verse 51, it says, But the apostles shook off the dust of, of their feet against them and went into Iconium. Now, they just went into Iconium and they left where they were, they were not being received. Does that, does that look right? All right. And then it comes down in verse 52, it says, And the disciples were continually filled throughout their souls with joy and the Holy Spirit. As, as we see that the, the Holy Spirit's very much part of everything that they're doing, realize He's got to be in everything that you're doing. Now, as we see this, as it comes down in verse 2 and it says, oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me address this here in, uh, in verse 1 of four, chapter 14 of Acts Gospel. Uh, ask gospel. Uh, it is good news. Yeah, that's good. Now at Iconium, also Paul and Barnabas went into the Jewish synagogue together and spoke with such power that the gr a great number, both of Jews and Greeks, believed and became Christians. Now we saw in verse thirteen or chapter thirteen what he preached, and he went down and preached the same thing using that same method just bringing it to them, not con condemning with his words, but allowing room for the Holy Spirit to do his work in the people's hearts. And, and as men would take and, and agree with and move along with, they all moved along with Paul as, as he and the Holy Spirit worked together. I want you to see that. Then it comes into ver chapter 3. Well, chapter 2. Chapter 2. Verse 2, it says, Embittered their minds. But the unbelieving Jews who rejected their message aroused the Gentiles, went to the Gentiles just as the, the people did, um, the synagogue, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Sanhedrin did with Jesus. Do you see that? They embittered the minds of the Gentiles and embittered the, their minds against the brethren. Now, these are brothers in Christ, in, in, in the anointing. These are the people that were at the synagogue that some of them didn't receive what Peter and Barnabas, I'm sorry, <laughs> Paul and Barnabas, help, Lord. Holy Spirit, we, we need your flow here today. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for it. So in verse 3, it says, So Paul and Barnabas stayed on there for a long time, speaking freely and fearlessly and boldly in the name in, in the Lord. Is the Lord the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Who continued to bear testimony to the word of his grace granting signs and wonders now who was doing what 
God was, God was doing the Lord who continued to bear testimony to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders. It's God working with them. Do you see it right there in that, that verse, verse 3? Then it comes down in verse, uh, at the end of verse 4, and it says, But the residents of the town were divided, some siding with the Jews and some siding with the apostles. What I want you to see is, you see here Paul and Barnabas being called apostles because they were sent ones. Now, they they were sent out by the Holy Spirit, remember? And now the, they're working with the Holy Spirit, bearing witness together, allowing the Holy Spirit to bear witness in the hearts of these men and women, right? Then it comes down in verse 6 and it says, They, aware of the situation, made their escape to Lystra and Derbe, the cities of uh, Lyconium, and the neighboring districts. Now, they went to a whole bunch of different places. But what, what I, I want you to see is they didn't stay. They stayed for a long time. But there was a threat that was brought up against them and when they found out about it, they, they left town. They didn't stay. There's times you're supposed to stay, and there's times you're supposed to get out. You follow the Holy Spirit. That's what I wanted to point out there. And look at verse 7. And there were, I'm, I'm sorry, there they continued to preach the glad tidings of the gospel. In verse 8 it says, Now at Lystra... A man sat who found uh, it impossible to use his feet, for he was a cripple from birth and had never walked. Now, this is an outstanding miracle. And that's why certain things happen after this, because they were worshiping other gods, and, and they thought, man, we've never seen anything like this before. So right before them all, and in the, in the presence, in the sight of those people, they knew who this person was before Paul got there, before, before Barnabas got there. But look at what happened here. He was listening to Paul as he talked, and Paul gazing intently at him, observing that he had faith to be healed. Now, how do you know when somebody's got faith to be healed? The Holy Spirit was telling him. Now he's 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 seeing that his his countenance had changed. He's he's seeing things from the natural on the outside, but looking inwardly, perceiving that as as his gaze was directed at by the Holy Spirit, the gaze was directed at this man. The Holy Spirit's directing, and here. The Holy Spirit's pointing out to Paul who's ready. What to do next. What to say. All of these things are coming forth here. And I, I like to see this. Paul stopped and shouted at the man. Is it the shout that did this? Or is it the, the forcefulness that Paul was moving with because he's moving in the Holy Spirit. He's moving with the Holy Spirit. Shouted at him, uh, stand up erect on your feet, and he leaped up and walked. I, I, <laughs> I'm pointing out here, he got loud. All right, and then it comes down, and they, they call Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes because... Paul was doing most of the speaking. That means Barnabas was doing some. As, as we see why Barnabas is different than Paul, we see that Paul was bringing things forth more eloquently with the Holy Spirit. He's, he's bringing things forth and, and doing different things. But look here in verse 14, it says, But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard it, of it, 
they tore their clothes and dashed out among the crowd, shouting. Now, these are not synagogue people. <laughs> they are, they are um, worshiping these idols and worshiping these other gods, these, these other things that they've come to, to worship. But look at that here, he goes out shouting. He, he goes out shouting again. He got loud again. And when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothing as, as if they were in the Jewish synagogue. Right? Because that's, that's what the high priest did because they thought Jesus was cursing or Stephen was cursing. And making some making out God to be something he wasn't, and and you see, they're they're doing things as Jewish people, as Jewish custom was, but they're doing it before God along with the Holy Spirit. So they they have some of the old training mixed with the new training that the Holy Spirit's training them with. Now, as we see these things, look down here in verse sixteen. It says. The, the generations past who permitted all the nations to walk in their own ways. Now, God permitted, there was a time frame, there was a situation that was happening that God allowed in generations past, He permitted, God permitted the nations to walk in their own ways. Now, and followed after their own hearts what, what they were seeing to do. And then look at what it says in 17. Yet he did not neglect to leave some witness of himself. There was always a witness of God all the time. And the people had a choice. Which, which made them not <laughs> just be under something. And have no choice. God left them a choice. God always leaves them a choice. And makes a way of escape for you. You have to take it. And then here. Um, the rest of that verse says. For he did, did you good. By sh showing you kindness. And gave you rains from heaven. And fruitful seasons. Satisfying your hearts. With nourishment and happiness. That's what God has always been doing. But do people see it that way? No. Even in the light of these words, they with difficulty prevented the people from offering sacrifice to them. No. That was a, a, a strange place, I'm sure, for Paul and Barnabas to be in. So look what happens next. But some of some Jews arrived there from Antioch and Iconium, the places they just went through, the place they shook off the, the, the dust of their feet against, right? They're chasing them down. They're coming after them, looking for them. They arrived there, and having persuaded the people, won them over, they stoned the very ones they were getting ready to sacrifice to. Do you see it? That, that is some strange way of thinking when you can be one side to straight to the other side, right? Flip-flop and back and forth. Um, and then they, they, they stone Paul. Well, where's Barnabas? How, why didn't they stone Barnabas? He wasn't speaking. As, as you kind of look at these things, there's different things. Is Paul receiving... That which he de dealt out, is he sowing and reaping? I don't believe so. But there were things that Paul was going to suffer because God said these are things you're going to suffer. So if you're thinking along the lines of what God said to him, this is what he's, he's thinking. He's thinking this is all right. This is all right for this to happen to me. Because God said it was going to happen to me. There's things that you're going to suffer, but were you supposed to be tortured? Were you supposed to be stoned to death? Were you supposed to be 
what was supposed to happen to you? Did, did God just forget about uh, uh, Psalms 91 and Isaiah you know, 54, 17? Did God just put those aside and say, no, for you, you got this. This is going to happen to you because of what you did, you bad boy. Did Jesus' blood cleanse him from his past sins or not? These are things that we've got to decide and, and, and look at as we look at Paul's life, and we've, we've already read through these things, so we saw last year of how, how he changed all the way through as we started reading all the other letters that he gave. He changed majorly by the end of all of this and, and stopped going and, and debating with the Jews. He stopped doing those things. That debate, was that what God wanted him to do? No, God wanted him to present the gospel and say, you can either believe it or not. I'm, I'm headed to the next place. And that's what you see in his life as it continues on from here. So as, as we look at the rest of this, I like to look at verse 20 here. It says, But the disciples formed a circle about him, and he got up and went back into the town. And on the morrow went on with Barnabas to Derby. Now, a person that just got stoned, they think he's dead. Uh, was he dead? Was he not dead? I would say he was dead. The disciples circled around him, and the Holy Spirit raised him up. So much so that he was healed enough to go on a journey the next day. So it, <laughs> I, 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 I like to look at these things and I, I like to say, who were these disciples? Did the disciples, some disciples come along with him? No. Remember, Mark came along with, but deserted them. And here went back to Jerusalem. He was out of here. I'm, I'm out of here. I, I can't handle this. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing this with you. <clears throat> I'm not going there with you, right? <laughs> so the disciples were the ones that just believed. And Barnabas was teaching maybe, talking to him separately. Or, or, or went, went away. Barnabas withdrew as they were getting ready to stone Paul. Uh, Barnabas walked through the crowd, but Paul didn't. Paul stayed and got stoned. Remember how Jesus, he's, he's, he's in his own hometown and is pushed up to, to uh, the, the pinnacle of their, their city, and they're going to throw him off the cliff. And here, it says that Jesus turned and walked through the crowd without anybody touching them. They had an angry mob there, enough to bring them all the way to the, that pinnacle of that mountain, or that hillside, right? And they couldn't throw them off. Jesus turned and walked through them. Is that what Barnabas did here? As we look at these different things about why Barnabas didn't get this, and why Paul did, was Barnabas believing something different? Barnabas, was he, was he seeing something different from Jesus' life? Because that's who they're supposed to be like. And Paul, is, is he still following the way he was? And, and here, he's thinking it's all right to be stoned. So, I'm, I don't know all these things, but I'm pointing these things out so you realize... Do you have to go through a stoning? Barnabas didn't go through a stoning. Paul did. Jesus didn't go through a stoning or a throwing down off the cliff. Paul did. Who are you going to follow? Our example, as, as Paul even tells us here in Ephesians 5.1, is, is that we're supposed to imitate, not Paul, but we're supposed to imitate, be imitators of God, copy Him and follow Him, His example, as well-beloved children imitate their father. 
Do you see that? As, as we pick and choose who we're going to follow, you're going to get whatever those that you're following get. You're, you're going to receive in your life those that you follow. Follow after Jesus. And here, Paul at a different place says, follow me as I follow Christ. He, he was changing his way, his mode of operation as he went through. Now look, as we come down here in verse 21, it says, and they, um, and they had preached, the, uh, when they had preached the good news, the gospel to that town and made disciples of many of the people, they went back to Lystria and Iconium and Antioch. So they're traveling. They're a traveling ministry and they're going and going back to the same people, the same disciples that they raised up for what purpose? Now watch how it changes here. In verse 22 it says, establishing and strengthening the souls and the hearts of the disciples. So they're setting up people to follow after Jesus as they are supposed to be following after Jesus. Do you see it? And, and here, you see this as it comes down, urging and warning and encouraging them to stand firm in the faith. Now, if they stop there, that's great. But this is what they go on, telling them that it is through many hardships, this and tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Is that what Jesus said? There are certain things that Jesus said about this, but those things are putting down your ways of thinking and your ways of doing and being what you think is right and taking up God's way of doing things and taking up and, and following after Him. Not after doing hardships. Not, not after being stoned. Not after these these tribulations that they're going through the tribulation jesus was talking about he said take unto you my way of doing things take take unto you my yoke learn of me be yoked with me jesus is saying and follow after me i know these are sounding a little bit different but as you study out paul's life things majorly change toward the end as, as you see how he is changing, that he's not so argumentative anymore, and that's what you're seeing from the last chapter. He, he presented the things a different way. And then he, he, he then came back and, and was moving on. He just got up and was ready to leave. Remember, he left Lystra and Derby. Right, uh, and and he didn't didn't stay there. He stayed there a long time until there was a threat motion toward his life, and then he got up and out. Why didn't he get up and out before here? Did they catch him before he could get out? Why couldn't he get out? And why did Barnabas get out? So all of those things, we're, we're bringing it, you know, I'm bringing these things out. When it comes down here, they, in verse 23, it says, And when they had appointed and ordained elders for them in each church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord, in whom they had come to believe, being full of joyful trust, that he is the Christ, the Messiah. And, and as we see these things, they're going back and raising up elders. They're going back and, and putting people in place a, as the Holy Spirit is directing them. They, they are fasting and praying just like they fasted and prayed over Barnabas and Paul before they sent them out. They are doing the same thing. They're, they're following after what they understand to do. And, and the Holy Spirit's leading them in, reminding them of what has happened already and, and showing them where they're headed. 
Now, if if you go and do something on your own, are things going to happen to you outside of what what the Holy Spirit's telling you to do? If if they would have went on when they saw this this disruption going on about that they're trying to to sacrifice to them if they would have just left left then would that have been better they were following the holy spirit and that's what i have to keep going back to and was it exactly correct did they do things separate from following the holy spirit did they mess up that got them into this situation especially Paul into this situation. Well, there's there's different things we can go and look at in the word, but we're not going to keep on with that. Let's let's look at how this changes down here. In verse 24 it says, "Then they went through um Phistia and arrived at Pamphylia, and when they had spoken the word at Pergama, the doctrine concerning the attainment through Christ of salvation in the kingdom of God, they went down to Adelaide. And from there, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had first been commended by the grace of God for the work which they had now completed. Now, when did they get the idea? How did they get the idea that they were completed? Their job was completed, now they're going back. I would say the Holy Spirit was directing them, saying, all right, now it's time to return. You've done what you're supposed to do, let's go back. Arriving there, they gathered the church together and declared all God had accomplished with them and how he had opened the Gentiles a door of faith in Jesus the Messiah, through whom we obtain salvation in the kingdom of God. And then here's this last verse of chapter 14. And there they stayed no little time with the disciples. Doing what? Training new converts. Instructing them on how to do things. Explaining what they learned from their accounts with the Holy Spirit. Now, they're getting trained all the while by the Holy Spirit, so they're seeing the new way of doing it, or the, a different way maybe, how, how things were different in this place than different from that place, and why certain things happen. Why did the disciples circle around them? Because Barnabas probably gathered them up and circled them around and said, we can raise them from the dead. Let's do it right now. However, even if he wasn't dead, if his life was still in him, he had to be raised up and healed enough to be able to go on a journey the next day. All of these things we we take in account and see that they're all the while training and instructing in the way of following the Holy Spirit. That's the whole thing of what we, we were getting out of today is you're following the Holy Spirit using Jesus as your guide, as as your example, not using Paul as your example. Because he's he's figuring it out with the Holy Spirit. To, you know, and and as we see these things, we have to realize Jesus is our example and we're following after him and we're we're seeing different things happen in Paul's life and Barnabas's life why is there a difference why why is this happening why is that happening why did it happen different in Jesus's life and watch that you're only speaking what the holy spirit wants you to speak and only doing that which the holy spirit shows you that the father is doing all right As you come to the end here with me, remember it's always God loves you. And we love you at that church. So come and join us on Sundays. And we're having the Bible study. We're having a Bible study tonight. And we're having a Bible study and worship on Friday night. And then Sunday service, my wife speaking. It's going to be a good service. So come. 
Come to that church. We're at 118, uh, one, let's see, 1118 Dogwood Drive South in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. God bless you. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Now take your place as you take his anointing to your world. Bye-bye.